Hi, it's Steve again. What I want to do is to give you a short introduction to the test HTML page that's provided for you on Blackboard and to just talk through it. We've set up a virtual folder on IIS and um, we can see uh, the page as it appears. And what I've done is downloaded the file off Blackboard called HTML underscore test. So let's just fire that up. So I know that the virtual folder appears as my web and the file is called HTML test. And so there it is. So I have my folder here with the file in it and I have the contents coming up in the browser here. It's a good point just to mention that as you develop your web pages, please use uh, this approach where you actually place content into a folder and then view it off the server uh, like this. It's obviously perfectly possible, and this is a very common mistake, just to double click a file and then it comes up and it seems to work fine, but you'll notice the address is it's coming up off the C drive, C Steve's website and so on. And that's not the way I'd like you to do it, so we'll close that. And instead, I'd like you to use the web server as it's configured. So in this case, placing the file in the particular virtual folder that I've created. So if I just go back to that folder and I open that in Notepad, so here's the file in Notepad. Let's just talk through this. So first of all, I see some meta tags at the top here. HTML is made up of a series of these angle brackets. There's the start, there's the end, and the end always has this slash just there. The HTML actually starts here with the HTML tag. All of the HTML tags are balanced, either in one line with the slash at the end, or if I scroll down the page, to the end where there's a forward slash and then the closing brace. If you use Notepad it's very handy because it actually helps you to track um, which tag goes with which. So if I just click on style you can see the style and h1 and so on. So moving down here HTML um, and an HTML document is made up of two parts. First of all the head, there's the head, and then the body. The head is where we place things like styles links to cascading style sheets, document level style sheets, and uh, importing JavaScript and so on. Here we have title. That title will appear at the top of the page. So if I just um, bring up the, the website we were just looking at, um, you'll see here spatial data on the internet. That's the title. As we come down here, I can see comments in there. The comment is an angle bracket exclamation mark two dashes and at the end another two dashes in the angle bracket. So if you want to document your code then uh, you do it like that. There's a style and that style is relevant just for this document. That's a document level style. So all of the H1 elements or the P elements in this document will have these styles. You can also link an external style sheet and the advantage of that is that that one style sheet can then be applied to all of the pages in your website, not just the one document in this case. In this case, that head that ends the head section, and then the body section starts. I have a heading 1, heading 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, just like in Microsoft Word, different levels of headings. Another comment. Then I have some paragraph text, table of contents. Next, I have a break. That effectively is a line that goes from one side of the page to the other. I beg your pardon, no it's not, uh, a break, that's that's like a soft carriage return in the page. This is the, uh, the horizontal rule, that's the line that goes from one side to the other. I have an a un, um, a unnumbered list, a UL, and within that unnumbered list, some list items. There's a list item that contains this, there's another list item. So these are going to be uh, bullet points because they're not numbered, unnumbered list. Uh, in this case, I have an A there. That is an anchor. That is a hot link to another part of either this document or indeed another document in my website or elsewhere on the web. In this case, this links to a named part of this document called train. We'll find that in a moment. There's another one linking to a part of the document called formatting. And down we go. So there's the horizontal rule. Uh, in fact, I could have a slash in there 
uh, to close that tag off. So there's some more paragraph text. You'll notice the hex code coming in here. These are special characters and you'll see the way those are rendered. Um, if you need to add special characters like the symbol for a pound or, or other special characters like half or fractions, for example, like a half, uh, you can use the extended ASCII set, but then you have to refer to the individual characters, uh, as I've done here. Uh, there's a strong that's going to emphasize the, the text uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the rendering. Uh, emphasize, italic, and, and so on. As I come down here, then, I have a table which is declared with a, a border width of 1, and the table is made up of a row, TR stands for table row. Within the table, the first line is a heading, table header. There's the table header, and that's, that's the first column heading is book title, TH, copies available. And that concludes that row. Then you go on to the next row of the table, which is made up again of a table data item now. So we've had the table header, this is the table data item, made up like so. So there's effectively, this is a table with two rows and two columns. That ends the table. I can also give that table a caption. Okay, we've had an unordered list up here, which was effectively a bullet list, it's unordered. If I want an ordered list, which is a numbered list, it's OL, like that. And again, exactly the same, I have a list item that starts and finishes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven list items. And in each of these I'm giving some examples of other codes. For example, citations, keyboard input, code, and sample output, and variables. All of these codes you can override in the style sheet and assign particular styles to the way they look. If I come down here you'll see I've got some um, subscripts. In the same way I could have superscripts with a SUP and so on. And that just gives you, and then the, uh, then I have some divisions here. It's worth just noting that divisions are going to be useful for you when you're placing maps onto the page. You'll need to declare a location for a division and then direct the output, for example, of a Google map into that division. Uh, the examples on the Google Maps page will show that nicely. And then the body section of HTML finishes, and then the HTML finishes as well. Last comments to make is when you enter in, make sure you always close a tag with the angle bracket and the slash, or if it's an inline style, like at the top here, um, you can actually have the slash at the end.